everybody. My name is Gabriel. Greetings from Florida. It's great to be here at Pi Colorado for the very first Pi Colorado. Uh, today I'm going to be giving you an intro to load testing with Locust and Python. Um, unfortunately, I've only got about 30 minutes because I could go on and on about this topic for probably over an hour. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to be doing a deep dive into anything. This is just getting our feet wet. We're, we're doing an introduction, right? So we're going to look at some of the major concepts of what load testing is, as well as some of the primary features of a really, really cool Python library called Locus. All right. So the question is, what is load testing? And, and most of us have a vague idea of this, right? Um, we have this idea of maybe hammering a site with lots of traffic, um, breaking things, right? Um, but, but there's actually a, a much more rigorous uh, discipline of load testing that involves exploratory testing where you're evaluating the performance of your applications at scale. Um, and so while we're doing this, we're asking important questions like how many concurrent users can my website handle? Um, and really, what kind of quality of service am I providing when the site's under heavy load? And that quality of service term is going to come back later. And this is really important. Load testing is really important because today everything's at scale. Right? Code we write runs everywhere all the time. And sometimes, sometimes that's really hard to, to sort of uh, wrap your head around when you're thinking about it. So before we go a little bit more into load testing, I also want to give you some context for where load testing belongs in the sort of uh, perspective of testing and, and what you might be doing as a, as a part of your software development process. Right? So this is maybe a familiar diagram from left to right where you've got your unit testing. And unit testing is uh, validating the, the functionality of individual components. Integration testing is putting those components together and seeing how they behave. And then UI testing is, is looking at the, um, the user interface, maybe a, a web application that you've built, making sure that the page load times are correct. And then all the way out there at the right is something that maybe a customer will handle is acceptance testing. And that's validating that you're meeting your SLAs. Right, so this is a left to, left to right diagram. This is something that's maybe familiar to us. Um, and there's lots of other kinds of testing that you could put in here, like uh, smoke testing, sanity testing, security, such, you know, some other ones. Um, but these, these, these four are the core ones that you're usually dealing with within a process. And the question is, where does load testing fit in on this graph? And the answer to that is everywhere, right? You can use load testing to validate the performance of your application in any stage in this process. So you can validate the performance of individual components as sort of a unit test. You can validate the performance of integration uh, of those components as you put them together, like an integration load test, right? You validate the performance of your UI, like load times, and you're validating the SLAs, like I already mentioned. So this load testing fits into our development process at every, every part of the process, right? And it's valuable because our code is everywhere. And so this is something we should be paying attention to. And so the questions we're asking while we're load testing are, what sort of metrics are we getting out when the site is uh, experiencing heavy load, right? And so these are the three metrics that we're looking for. Throughput is a measure of how many simultaneous requests we can handle before something catastrophic happens, right? And then latency is how long do these requests take? And then finally, as we're experiencing throughput and latency, what kind of breaking points do we see? You know, the, and, and these breaking points are situations where the application just gives up and dies, right? And so an illustration of this would be like an e-commerce e site that's expecting heavy load, maybe before Christmas or Black Friday. You've got a 70% off sale, and you're expecting tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, you know, many, many users hammering on your site. You're asking yourself, what goes wrong? What breaks? When does it break? How many concurrent users can I handle? What kind of throughput, latency, and breaking points are we going to see while that's occurring? And that's the quality of service metrics that we're looking for when we're load testing, right? So I'm going to show you a secret to effective load testing. And keep in mind here, you're trying to break this code. You're trying to take the code that you copied and pasted from Stack Overflow, and you're going to try and push it to its limits. So the secret to load testing effectively is you don't want these tests to pass. When you discover the limits of the code that you copied and pasted, you improve it, and you find the limits of the new code. And you keep iterating again and again on this theme where you're, you're, you're never really going to achieve an infinite scale of load testing. You're never going to be able to simulate load at infinite scale to be able to test what happens at infinite scale. So the best you can do is just keeping the, keep pushing the limits of the current code. And so another way to say this is design load tests that fail. The purpose of load testing is to discover where are your limits right now and take it to the next level. 
If you leave this talk with anything, it's this slide. All right. This is a Python conference after all, so let's look at some code. So the library we're going to be talking about is called Locust, as I already mentioned. And this is a pretty popular open source library for load testing. Um, and the real reason I'm talking about Locust today is because I've used other tools in the past. Has anyone used JMeter here? Yes, I see hands. I feel your pain. Right, so I'm talking about Locust, so you don't have to ever use JMeter again. Um, it's really easy to use. This is the most basic load test you can write using Locust, nine lines, right? So remember that unit test from before where we're talking about validating the performance of a single component. That's what this is doing. We have two classes. One's called uh, my website user and one's called my tasks, right? My website user here, there's a lot more um, configuration things you can do with your locust user class, but for now and for the purposes of this, uh, of this talk, we're just going to be doing the bare minimum and focusing on what tasks do. So we've got a task set class here called my tasks, right? And what it's doing is the method annotated with that task is going to repeatedly, for each user, repeatedly load a user profile um, using you know, self.client.get, and there's a, an endpoint that we're hitting, right? So this is great. We've got a user, we've got task, a, a task that it can execute. It's just going to repeatedly get this profile, and that's you know, the unit test where it's just validating the performance of one component. All right, so that's great. So how do I run a load test? You're gonna pip install the library. Pretty simple, you could use pip install, you can use a virtual end, choose your poison. Um, and then there's two different ways of actually running the test. One is with the web UI, right? And so that, that allows us to see the load test in, in uh, your web browser as it's running. Or you can also run it headlessly, and this can be useful in sort of a CI CD environment. Um, either way, you're gonna see that we're passing in the locus file, we're passing in a host parameter, which says this is the host name of the uh, website that I'm testing, so this might be your QA site. And then um, in the case of running without the web UI, you're gonna provide these dash C and dash R parameters. And dash C specifies the number of users, and that was the my website user class that you saw earlier, the number of users to spawn, and dash R is going to tell you how quickly to spawn them, right? And once those users are all spawned, they're just gonna start hammering the site with the tasks that you've provided. All right, so you're running your load test, and like I said, there's a nice web UI that provides you the results where you can see the name of the request that you're making, how many requests are there, how many times it's failed. In this case, I somehow got a perfect one and it never failed. That's never gonna happen to you, trust me. You've also got median, average, minimum, and maximum request times. And you can see all the way there at the maximum, 2.8 seconds, that's, eh, that's a little long. <clears throat> so this is great. I can write a load test that sends hundreds or thousands of requests to just hammer on my application. But the problem is that this test is not much better than a cat pressing refresh on my laptop. And I just wanted an excuse to put a cat gif in this talk. <coughs> so I have great news for you. With Locus, our tests can become a lot more sophisticated. So now we're looking at a, a different load test, right? We've still got the same my website user based on HTTP Locust. And now we've got two tasks. And the parameter that we're passing to the at task decorator here, two and three, those are the weights for those tasks. So now, every five times this user is executing a task out of, uh, you know, as, it, as it's running the load test, two times out of five it's going to do, you know, hit the product's carpet's endpoint, you know, some other endpoint. And then three times out of five it's gonna hit a different endpoint. And this allows us to sort of simulate maybe different uh, randomization of, of requests that are coming in on our, on our site. And um, something I wanna draw attention to here, I, I just wanna point out that that's the weights. Something I wanna draw attention to here is the, the client object provided on the task set. The client object is actually just a wrapper for a library that you probably used before, which is requests, right? And so what Locust does is it provides this client that when you make requests, depending on the, uh, the status code that you get from that request, it will register uh, success or failure within the state of Locust so that at the end it can show you those results, how many failed, how many passed, right? All right, so this is an improvement of the original one. We're not just refreshing the page, we're randomizing the requests a little bit. But this doesn't seem like typical user behavior. I'm not switching between tabs when I'm using a website, just refreshing. So my observation is usually users will perform tasks within a sequence step by step. And this is something that Locust allows us to do. So here's another example. I've cut off the user because it's the same as in the other examples. Here we have three tasks 
And uh, the first one I'm just illustrating here that you can do a post request. You can do anything that you normally would with requests. Um, and you can see that we now have the sequence task uh, decorator here, which defines the order in which these tasks are going to get executed. So now, when we run our test, we spin up a thousand users, and each one of these has the task sequence. And then it's going to execute those tasks within that sequence. So this is great, right? This is a pretty typical user flow. There's a lot more complexity you can do here, but that's the general idea. All right. So maybe there are situations where having a status code of 200 isn't necessarily what we want to use to define success and failure. So in this test, here's another example, right, where you're gathering the response with a with, a with statement, and then you're checking if this, the status code is a 404, and if it's a 404, maybe that's successful in your load test, right? And the, the, the thing to keep in mind here is that the response object is a wrapper provided by Locust, where it has methods that you can use to define the success or failure of your test. That's the wrapper method. All right, so now you've run your load tests and everything's broken. You're seeing 500 status codes, you're seeing out of memory errors, and you're seeing lots of logs spitting out of your copied and pasted code from Stack Overflow. My first piece of advice is don't panic, and this is great, right? You're, we're recognizing that we've reached the goal that we set out to achieve because we found the breaking point. The goal in the beginning was to design tests that fail. So this is a good thing. This is a good reaction to have. What we need to do next is get, get value from our load test results, right? And here are three ways that we can get the most value out of load tests. The number one thing we need to do is measure everything, right? And Locust really helps you out with this, as you saw in the UI view from earlier, because it provides the number of requests that have passed or failed, depending on how you define that. And it provides the latency graphs. It, uh, it provides a distribution of requests with uh, you know, how many milliseconds it took to respond. So Locust kind of has this built in. right? But the other two, maybe not so much, because that's only giving us a very narrow-minded perspective from, from the perspective of the client. We don't know what's going on in the back end. So what we also need to consider is that our systems are really complicated. When you're doing load testing, you need to think of your application as a beating heart where you need to identify a clogged artery. You may have multiple different pieces that are all interacting with each other, and more often than not, your high, low, uh, your high latency and low throughput are caused by one part of the system causing other ones to wait for it, right? So you need to be asking yourself, what database calls am I making? What calls to other services am I making? And are there performance issues related to I.O. or something like that? And then finally, we also need to, and this kind of summarizes up the other two, uh, we need to completely monitor the system under test, right? So we're measuring everything so we can find bottlenecks. And the way that we achieve this is by monitoring the system un under test. And in my experience, you can gather logs, you can look at the memory usage, CPU usage, I.O. speeds. But honestly, the best way to do this is to use an APM uh, solution. So this could be Elastic APM, it could be Stackify, Datadog, New Relic. There's a lot of good options out there for application performance monitoring. Right, and so this is useful, like I said, when you're looking for the clogged artery in a whole beating heart. So we've identified where the problem is, right? We understand what piece of the system is causing others to wait for it, maybe. We understand why we're getting latency or breaking points. So what we need to do now is take action. And there's three progressively worse levels of this, right? So the first one is the one we like, which is fixing the code, and this is the best case scenario. You have the time to do the load testing, to understand what's going wrong, and you actually get to fix the code. Another option here is to also scale up hardware resources. And this has become a little bit, uh, a little bit of a better option now that we can use things like AWS or Google Cloud, where we can really, really easily scale up the resources. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the time, you have to live with your findings because there's just not enough time to continue iterating. And that's okay, actually. That's actually an okay thing to do because in a lot of situations you discover, I can't handle 10,000 concurrent users right now, but I only ever get 1,000. So I don't need to solve a problem that I'm not at yet. All right, so that's the primary part of the talk. What I want to go into now are two more advanced topics that you can encounter when you're doing load testing. So the first of these is running Locust Distributed. Um, and unfortunately, the, di uh, the, 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 the terminology used in the Locust documentation um, is master and slave, but I've changed that to be agent and controller here. 
Um, what we want to be able to do is simulate load. And sometimes maybe you're running your load tests on a single machine. You're targeting another single machine. That's just not enough to create the simulation of load that we need. And so what we can do is have a single controller talking to agents, and all of those agents will then load test the system that you're trying to break. And this is actually pretty easy to do in Locus. It's built in with the um, expect slaves parameter uh, for the controller node, and then you can make, may spin up multiple VMs potentially. All of them have a, a slave argument here, and then they point to the master, and they communicate together, and the controller will coordinate when the agents talk to the system under test. And then finally, we're able to also test non-RESTful services. Um, and this is great because there are situations where you're load testing systems that don't expose HTTP endpoints, right? We're not always dealing with REST APIs. Sometimes we're using SOAP, some kind of R R XML RPC, right? We might be flooding message queues, um, like Kafka, for instance. We might be making database calls. And so the Locust library exposes some APIs for dealing with custom non-HTTP requests. That's a lot of code, right? So here, we measure the time that it takes to make a my function call. And, and that could be anything, right? Like I said, it could be a, a request to a SOAP API. It could be um, you know, sending a message on a message queue. We, we measure the time that it takes to do that. And that can be pretty much anything you want. And then, yeah, we're, we're saving the result, sorry, in the success variable there. And then we register these events on Locus itself. Um, and this is using gevent, which maybe some of you are familiar with. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. You can do pretty much anything. And the, the anecdote I have here is we had a system at a company I previously worked for where the primary input to the system was a um, Java message, message queue. And so we used a Locus test to just flood that message queue with messages and then watch as all the services pulling off of that queue how they behaved, how they scaled, and how they eventually broke. That's all I have, and I'm early, which is great. I'd rather be uh, early than go too long. So my hope is that you'll leave with a better understanding of what load testing is and what it can do for you, and I hope you leave with a desire to go out and try Locust for yourselves um, and also design load tests that fail. Thanks for your time, and I think we can take questions. We've got enough time, and yeah. If you have How often do you recommend running the load test? Like if you take unit test, we run every PR merge, uh, integration test will uh, run like every hour or so. What is your recommendation for load tests? That vastly depends upon what you're doing and who you're working for. A lot of the time, load testing is one of those uh, types of testing that kind of falls by the wayside and you don't end up getting a time to do it. But um, my recommendation, honestly, is that you take a look at the scale that you're seeing from your application right now and then gauge the amount of load testing you do based on that. So you would look at your metrics for how many users you get a day or a month or whatever like that. And then based on those metrics, you then decide how often to do load testing. Hi, so you have got two decorators over there. One is task and another is a sequence task and they both take two different parameters. Like one is the weight and another is the sequence. Correct. What if I want to use both weight as well as the sequence? Yeah, that's something I wasn't able to cover, but you can specify multiple different task sequences or task sets to a user. That's, I think I mentioned at the beginning, I wasn't gonna really cover more of the advanced ways that you can configure a user. But you can actually provide it with multiple task sets and multiple task sequences, and there are ways you can sort of provide logic for when those get used. Um, that's something you could look at. The so there's stock. a possibility. Absolutely, yeah. thank you. Um, I'm in the really unfortunate position of having to talk a client into rewriting JMeter tests that are huge and nasty, but they work. Is maintainability my best bet, or what else can I add to that argument to hopefully get a rewrite in Locust? I don't know oh, if that's more a performant fun one. Or you know, that's, that's sort of a battle that you're going to have to uh, choose your hell to die on. Honestly, I think maintainability for Locust tests is pretty high. Um, I, in my experience, maintainability is one of the things that JMeter just does not have. And so if you're talking with a client and they're asking what a benefit is, maintainability is one, um, and customizability is one. Like JMeter is still limited on the things that it can do. You can do anything in Locust, right? You got something? 